Recording in progress. Round ah. good afternoon. I'm the Councillor Austin Roberts. And I'm the chair for this planning meeting. Can I welcome everyone to the meeting, which is a multi-location meeting? In addition to committee members, we also have officers joining us to assist with our discussions and um, guest speakers. The meeting will be live streamed and recorded and will be available for viewing after meeting. Should the live streaming fail, the meeting will continue and the recording will be available through the Council's website following the conclusion of the meeting. Can I remind members that translation facilities are available and for those attending remotely to choose your language of choice? For those wishing to speak in the chamber, please raise your hand. For those attending remotely, please use the raised hand function. We will alternate between speakers in the chamber and remote attendees. For those attending remotely, please note that those in the chambers will be unable to use the chat facility. Committee members who are attending remotely are required to leave their camera on throughout the debate and when voting in order to maintain the integrity of the decision-making process. If you do need to leave the meeting temporarily, pop a message in the chat function so the Democratic Services Officer is aware and then let us know when you return. I expect everyone to be present and participating in this meeting to conduct themselves appropriately and be respectful to each other. That applies to members, officers and anyone in the public gallery. Can I remind members as well, we're close to be quarret. We're just over quarret today. So can I please ask you to stay throughout the meeting, please? And I hope it won't be a long meeting anyway. So it's important that you all stay in the meeting today, please. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. First item, apologies for absences. Apologies from councillors David Carr, Mandy Hawkins, Dave Jones, Tristan Lewis, Kay Redhead and Trevor Stotts. Thank you. <coughs> That's Declarations of interest. I'd like to declare an interest in reference zero slash five one three seven two. Um that's the kiosk at Rose on Sea because I've already predetermined my decision on a public forum. Thank you. And Councillor Anthony Bertola. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Chair Dioch. Um Yes, I, I'd like a declaration of interest in uh, items zero stroke five oh four eight zero and zero five oh six oh four. Uh, it's in my ward. I know the application person uh, where I, we've met on other social events um, regarding other issues as well. So I'd like to raise that point if I may. Thank you. Chair, yeah, could um, Councillor Batola just confirm, is is that a personal and prejudicial interest in, in that case? Yeah, personal, uh, yeah. Is it both personal and prejudicial? Will you be, Will you be leaving? leaving the meeting? Yes, I, I will be. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Any any other declarations? That goes. Yeah. I'm lying on you. Okay. Moving on. Urgent matters. No urgent matters, Chair. Thank you very much. Fourth item: minutes to approve and sign as correct record minutes of the previous meeting. I won't read them. I'll just call out the numbers. 7, pages 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Any propositions here? Councillor Ivor Lloyd and the seconder, Joe Nettle. Thank you. Can you show your hands? Right. Am I any? 
Atzerita, Atzer, um, we'll move can... on to the first. Zero stroke, Petwar now, Petwar Pim. Oh, four, nine, four, five, two. Existing dwelling and erection of nine new dwellings together with formation of new access and pedestrian footpath, Glinton, Top Han Road, Glan Conway. Am I going to need I? We have two speakers. For this one, Mr. Rhys Davis to start. He's in favour. Yeah, three minutes. Okay, you have three minutes. Thank you very much for me to speak. I've not come across many planning applications uh, in my uh, 30 years or so of working in planning uh, uh, that have been so thoroughly assessed by planning officers and consultees as the, this particular application. Building on previously developed land brings its challenges, and this site is no exception, particularly when surrounded by neighbouring houses. However, in this case... All potential effects on, ne on neighbours have been thoroughly considered with detailed assessments and additional robust site level information showing that the separation and privacy distances between houses and neighbours well exceed the required standards. Additionally, a detailed daylight assessment has been carried out by specialists to the BRE standards, which shows that the proposed development complies with those standards and, as your officers confirm in their report, having run through in detail the potential effect on each and every neighbour, daylight and sunlight impact is seen as not being a reason for refusing this application. Overall, the proposal makes best use of previously developed land in a sustainable location, as advocated by national and local planning policy. It will deliver a mix of much-needed homes, including a mix of four-bedroom, three-bedroom and two-bedroom houses, therefore delivering some of the more affordable homes which the community's councils seek in their representations, whilst also respecting the density and character of surrounding houses. The provision of nine houses on this site strikes the right balance and also delivers two houses specifically designated as affordable housing, significant active travel improvements in the form of a footpath and cycle link at a current pinch point in Topland Road, which can only be, be delivered as part of this development. The provision of almost 10 times the required open space on the site itself and also detailed biodiversity enhancements which have been agreed in detail with the council's ecologist the committee report does note that some representations raise concern about foul and surface water drainage but again these matters have been assessed in detail by specialist consult consultees including dur cymru and the council's environmental roads and facilities team and found to be acceptable the surface water proposals have been designed and tested to be such compliant and i can assure that there will be no impact on neighbor on neighbors in terms of surface water or foul water dispersal you also as a council have additional safeguards through the council's own such appro approval process which will follow on from planning overall as i and your officers and consultees now concur this detailed application provides exactly the right balance between the need to deliver homes for local people and the need to protect the amenity of neighbors I trust, therefore, that you can agree with your detailed officer's thorough assessment and approve the application today. Thank you very much, Rhys. I invite Councillor Sharon Dolman to speak against, please. Welcome, Sharon. Uh, you have three minutes. Yeah. Sansan Fried is a Welsh village, the gateway to the Conway Valley. We have a strong, vibrant community and our own culture and the history of which we are very proud of. We are also blessed, or as some would say cursed, with having stunning views of the river and mountains. It makes our village a high, highly desirable place to retire to or to have a second home or Airbnb. Over the past five years, we have seen five developments of luxury homes ranging from one-bedroom apartments at £190,000 to detached four-bedroom houses for £850,000. Several of these executive homes still remain unsold. 
In addition, we have a development of 107 homes currently under construction in the village, 30% of which will be affordable homes. We do not need any more luxury executive homes in our village. We need homes for local families who want to continue living here in the village. I note there are two two-bedroom affordable houses proposed for the Glinton development. I question why one of those is not a three or four bedroom house so that a local family with children could have a home, an affordable home. This proposed development will also affect the well-being of the neighbours who have made their representations with regard to their privacy and the close proximity of the proposed houses to their homes and will add further pressure to the infrastructure of the village. As the CPRW state, this application should be completely revised due to the inadequacy of layout house types, causing overlooking and breaking the skyline, and as submitted should be refused. Those of you who visited the site will be aware that the roads in San San Fried were built over 150 years ago for horses and carts, not for the volume of traffic that exists today. There does not appear to be any mention of how, how, how delivery vehicles will access the Glinton site. Will they bulldoze their way through Church Street and up Top Land, causing mayhem? Or will they drive through the new My Savelli development to gain access? Planning Committee, I urge you to refuse this application. We do not need any more executive homes in our village. San San Fried residents want to keep our Welsh village the vibrant community it is now. We do not want it to become an overdeveloped enclave for the rich. Our young people need homes. Building these types of houses in villages like Clan San Fried will not solve Conway's housing crisis. However, eventually it will destroy communities. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, Therefore, right, um, Stephen Price. Ah, thank you, Chair. Recording in progress. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Talbot. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you very much. This uh, landing board, to be honest, it sticks out like a sore finger. It is there on this land. It has an adverse effect. It's clearly visible from the residential road. And to me, it just spoils the area. Now then, also... Facilities such as these, the camping facilities that has been 
built here now on the land is totally out of character. It is in close proximity to residential dwellings, and I mean close. It is also detrimental. It is on plot of land with the yurt, with the hot tub, with the toilet block, and the pod itself, clearly visible from a beautiful grade two listed building. Now then, also, if this was to go ahead, noise pollution would be horrendous. There would be a risk of late night partying, loud music, and the 24 7 access could not be controlled, which could destroy any peace and quiet residents have come to enjoy. Now then, on this site, there is no parking whatsoever. And Bolafen Road that adjoins the site is a very narrow country lane. No footpaths, very poor street lighting. So parking on this road would not be possible. Were the people visiting the site going to park the vehicles? They can't. Now then, also, you've got Bodafon School, you've got Arulfrin Nurse Home, you've got residents of Bodafon Road have all signed a petition strongly objecting to this application. Now then, in the quest to create a commercial campsite, what was once a scenic, beautiful, wooded landscape has been totally eroded. It is now being decimated. And to me, all thankful Conway Bury Council did at least place a tree preservation order on the land. I am thankful for that and hope that that would alleviate any more problems causing destruction of this site. I thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Mr. Peter Lloyd, agent, speak, speaking in favour and joining by Zoom. Are you there, Mr. Lloyd? I hope so, Chair. Can you see me, hear me? Yes, we can. You have three minutes starting from now. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll take nowhere near three minutes. But um, this supporting statement, I'm indeed the one for the following item on the agenda, are actually quite similar. For those of you who attended site yesterday, you'll have seen both developments in place. This, this glamping pod not quite yet finished. I stress the applicant found herself in this position through a genuine misunderstanding and belief that these structures were temporary and did not require planning permission. But indeed, we are where we are. As the report sets out, this site has both policy and statutory constraints, but officers endorse the scheme and recommend that you grant permission. Bodavon Hall, which incidentally has nothing to do with Bodavon Farm, previously operated as a hotel before the main building returned to a private residence. The wooded grounds to the west of the hall where the development is sited is, I'm, was, I'm advised, formerly used as hotel grounds, gardens and tennis court. The hall itself continues to function as a tourism enterprise with its outbuildings permitted as holiday letting accommodation. The pod in this location will assist in diversifying that business from the site whilst providing for a simple woodland location stay very close to Llandidno. It targets a different market than is otherwise generally available locally and is the glamping type of use that this committee has interpreted, endorsed and has, and has have strongly supported under your LDP policies. It supports the status of Llandidno as the premier resort in Wales rather than detracts from it. It's small, modest accommodation would, and will be attracted to small families and active couples who wish to experience a simple, tranquil break in a wooded environment with access to the active travel network. 
The committee report sets out that the location, impact and constraints which affect this site and this application, as well as the policy context, so you understand them. But your officer support shows that the scheme provides satisfactory development with acceptable and limited impacts in the Green Wedge, special landscape area and near the listed building. In principle, this type of development is one that both Planning Policy Wales and your LDP allow. Equally, the other concerns, including those by Mr. Talbot over potential effects, were they even to cons- were they even to concern co- occur? Sorry, are outside planning considerations or can be controlled and mitigated with planning condition. The scheme would not raise significant or adverse effects on the site, its setting, or beyond its boundaries. Your highways have no objection to the scheme from a parking or other accessibility perspective, and there would be no new access to Bod Oran Road. The applicant has also agreed to deliver a woodland management plan to secure the woodlands for the future. I trust you can support this scheme today. Thank you. Jacobo, thank you. Uh, I turn to the officer, which is uh, Liz Wood. Are you there, Liz? Oh, sorry, you're there. <laughs> Oh, very good. I, I thought I thought I saw you sat over there, and then I thought, oh, she, I must have been seeing things, and you must be on screen. <laughs> Sorry about that, Liz. Um, just... No. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry, I repeat that. I've just let you know there's no updates on this item. Okay. Yeah, hold. Right, I'll open it to the floor. Uh, Councillor Chris Keita. Found our, um thank you, Katherid. Uh Yeah, I um, I always get very uh, anxious when uh, development is proposed in a green wedge, and this um, is actually in a special landscape area, ancient woodland, and a green wedge. So uh, the presumption should be against uh, a significant development, um, and I'm really pleased that we went on a site visit yesterday, Chair, because uh, it was very illuminating um, seeing the context of the hall there and the woodland and these um, these structures. So uh, I think I would propose that we go with the officer's recommendation on balance. Uh, it is, it's very minor, the, um, the development, uh, and I think the officers are very clear that further expansion and intensification um, would not be considered suitable. So uh, I think that needs to be conditioned, uh, and I'm assuming that would be a condition in the uh, planning permission. Um, the biodiversity, we looked at di- biodiversity, and in actual fact, the biodiversity is better, and the fact that it's the area is not um, groomed very well, uh, you know the the paths are quite overgrown, and, and the area uh, has got a lot of uh, shrubbery there. So we don't want all that cleared. Uh, we want that retained, and presumably there'll be um, some uh, um, a management scheme conditioned as well. So I'm I'm prepared to support this on balance. the The business about the parking, yes, there shouldn't be any access from the very na- narrow Bedavon Lane, just by the farm at the bottom there. But I didn't have a problem with the access to the hall. Our coach drove up there quite easily and part, it was quite a large parking area. So I'm, I'm not concerned about that. So on balance, uh, Chair, I, I'd like to prepare, propose that we, we grant this uh, permission, but with those conditions, please. Okay, can you just clarify the conditions again, please? Yeah, so there's the uh, the woodland management plan, um, and also um, that there shouldn't be an opening for further e- intensification. Uh, Ms. Mr. Tolbert um, you know, uh, spoke against this because he was worried it'd become a, a, a busy campsite, and I definitely wouldn't want this area to become a busy campsite. So could that be conditioned that there wouldn't be any further intensification? Paula. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, we'll look for measures to um, control the woodland management plan, but in terms of intensification of the site, unfortunately we won't be able to impose a, co- um, a condition that will control future 
proposals, it would need to come in as an application. It would need any further development would need to be considered on its merit at that time. As long as any further development intensification, whatever you want to call it, um, would need a completely new planning application and they couldn't sort of piggy back onto onto this one. Am I right? Yeah, that's my understanding in terms of the yeah, the um the site areas are very tightly clip um drawn around both the glamping pod and the next item on the uh, agenda. Um ir irrespective, they would still need to apply for any future development on there that to of this nature. Okay, Councillor Councillor Eva Lloyd. Do you vote Can you second? Uh, no, I'm yep. willing to second that uh, proposal. Um, but I just last I'd like to ask a question to Paul Smith if he's happy with the highways stroke parking arrangements on this soft planning application. Hi, good afternoon, committee. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, Paul. Yes, thank you. Hi, um highways are satisfied with the parking arrangements previous usage. I Can you repeat that, please, Paul, because you, you, you just cut up a little bit. Highways have assessed it against previous usage, and yeah. highways are satisfied with the parking, the space, and the provision, and the access. Yeah, okay. Dear Paul, thank you for your expertise. Yeah, happy to, Ilya, happy to uh, second. Um, Lovely. with those conditions as well, please. Thank you. Councillor Nuttall. Um, yeah, I was going to second, so I'm happy to support. Um, could we also add um, something about uh, late night noise um, after a certain time? No loud music. Environmental Health have commented on the application. They don't have any objections. If there were to be problems that would recur, it would be for them to take the appropriate course of action because it's covered in their legislation. Okay. So under the planning requirements, we can't duplicate that. Deal. Deal. Oh, Councillor Hunter. No. Oh, you, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I've got a proposal, I've got a second there. Everybody happy? Show of hands, please. Any against? Any abstentions? And that has been passed. Right. Um, now, with Yonda, good news. We can now revert to a bilingual meeting. So, until it goes again, obviously. Yeah, it's in this code reference. The next item. Stroke 5. 0604 development of land with yurt and associated ancillary works retrospective application for Davon Hall for Davon Road. Uh, I did know. Uh, we have speakers. Um, just Peter Lloyd speaking in favor, and he will be joining via Zoom. Are you there again, Mr. Lloyd? Good afternoon, Chair. Nice to see you. Been such a long time since we spoke. <laughs> Um, thank you. Yeah, Chair, I mean, I'm pretty much going to repeat what I said previously, so I'll, I'll run through it very quickly There's, with some slight different nuances. Obviously, most of you saw the site yesterday, um, and again, and reiterate, this is retrospective, but it, it's on, the, on a misunderstanding and a belief that it was a temporary structure and permission wasn't required for its letting use. It, it, this this year has been there for quite some time. Um I also say, you know, your report does set out policy and statutory constraints, and it's again endorsed by officers. I think the, the, the grounds to the to the east of the sorry to the west of the hotel provide some form of buffer to this scheme, um, and the hall itself provides a tourism enterprise. Sorry, members, I've got another thing on the phone there. Um, the Yurton Associated works with this application continue to assist in diversifying the business at the site and providing a simple woodland location close to Clandino with a different market other than generally available locally and is the type of accommodation this committee has previously interpreted and supported. 
um, supporting the status of Llandudno as a premier resort in Wales rather than detracting from it. I think slightly different market for this accommodation. It is still it's still still modest, but will be attractive mainly to individuals and couples, and that's the experience of this one in the past who wish to experience that tranquil break in a pleasant environment close to the network. Um, in setting out the discussions about the location and impacts, this effect, this site offers of support, still shows that the scheme satisfactory development with acceptable and limited impacts on the Green Wedge SLA and obviously in this case the listed building. As you'll have seen yesterday, and I think it's key to focus on this point with this application, the site where the yurt is positioned is actually screened from the rear of Bad Avon Hall itself by, by the wall and accessible only through it if you needed to go through and, and indeed screened by other features. And it has a very limited minor physical impact when perceived in its surroundings. So again, in principle, this is a development that Climate Policy Wales and the LDP allow. Um, and equally, those other concerns raised over potential effects were they to occur are either not planning considerations or can be covered by the planning conditions which officers and members have already discussed on the previous item. So, again, I just endorse this to you, officers. I hope you can, uh, members, I hope you can support it again today and I'll take no more of your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, over to you. Uh, just a couple of updates, members, in terms of the report, a couple of corrections. On paragraph three, it's corrected to, it should read, the site lies within the grounds of the hall and, and is considered to form part of the curtilage. And paragraph 21, it should read, the yurt lies within the grounds of the hall and is considered to form part of this historic curtilage of the hall. However, officers, officers consider that the proposal has minimal impact on the setting of Bert Avon Hall listed building because there is a clear boundary between the yurt and the hall which comprises a mixture of trees and shrubs together with a stone wall and timber fence. Additional landscaping along the boundary wall stroke fence would provide further screening and mitigate the impact of development in the setting of the listed building. And that we can say could be conditioned. Thank you. So I'll open the floor. Councillor Chris Kitter. Yeah, uh, uh, Chair, um, I'd just like to... Uh, repeat um, what I said uh, before about the, the previous application uh, concerning the Green Wedge and, um, you know, the presumption against development. I, I'm happy with this one as well. Uh, and going there yesterday, yes, it, it didn't seem as if it was going to have a significant effect on uh, Badavon Hall itself. Um, but yes, if we can put the conditions about the management plan on this one as well. Um, and I presume that they won't be able to put a whole cluster of these yurts there uh, without further planning permission. Because um, the, the one yurt, it, it looked quite an old yurt, so it obviously had been there quite some time, Chair. So, yes, I, I think that we could go with the officer's recommendation. I'd like to propose that. Thank you. Paul, are you happy with? Yeah, I'm happy that we can control that. Just in addition to that, just to confirm that our ecologist also hasn't raised any objections to the woodland management plan that has been submitted and she feels it provides a satisfactory 10-year woodland management plan. So we will be able to control that as a condition in the decision note. Thank you. Councillor Nuttall. Yeah, again, happy to support if we can just add a further condition um, that the screening is added to um, between the, the hall and the and the um, proposed development. Um, just to confirm that, yeah, um, that's what I would suggest as well. With, with, from our perspective, we thought screening, additional screening along that boundary that we saw yesterday, would just assist in, in making that boundary clearer between the two and having that, that physical break and also... Uh, just provide a little bit more additional screening to the listed building as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ivar Lloyd. Thank you very much. Yes, please. I just want to ask, are we going to expand on the, on the planning to screening or are we going to put something physical up there? Uh, 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 are we got, uh, is the screening going to be some sort of plan? Um, plan Planting. planting scheme. Or is it going to be so, solid? Um, yeah, I would suggest it should be planting. Sorry, that was the bit that I didn't yeah. pick through on the translation. I didn't pick it up on the translation. So, yeah, I agree. It should be soft landscaping rather than something uh, more structured. Yeah, only were happy. 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 Okay. Very happy. Thank you very much. Who's indicated they want to speak. So, um, I got a proposer. 
in Councillor Chris Gator, seconded by Councillor Joan Nuttall. Show hands, please. And one abstention. Thank you very right. much. Okay, moving on. Right, uh, uh, okay, the next proposal is code reference 051120 20, direction of And we have a speaker, uh, the local ward member, Councillor Anne McCaffrey. Are you there, Councillor Anne? I am indeed, Boston. Roy so, uh, you have three minutes starting from now. Okay, thanks, Chair. National and local policy is to preserve and enhance heritage assets, yet policy here seems to be being given insufficient regard or weighting, despite a presumption against development. I'd ask you to reject this application or at least defer it to enable a detailed heritage impact assessment to be done on the impact on Penakai heritage asset area. In total, I've got six concerns. The first is increasing density in a low density heritage area. The proposed infill will erode the Penakai heritage asset area and architectural quality nearby, for example, at Glanfrod, which is opposite, and at the clock tower of Edenhall Mews, which is adjacent. Infilling is out of character, DP3 refers, and in terms of scale and, and massing and elevation, and is explicitly frowned upon in CTH2, where section 4.7.3.3 specifically references the need to protect Penakai in this regard, i.e. from infilling. My second concern is overdevelopment. Aintree House is a large four-storey six-bedroom house in a large garden. It's already been developed to the north, a, ma a massive elevated extension on which an additional room has been installed. This proposal now seeks to squeeze a four-storey building into a constrained part of the garden within the heritage area, where a protected characteristic of local houses is to have large gardens. This proposal is out of character. My third concern is overlooking. The existing extension overlooks Eden Hall Victorian Gardens, as will the new four-storey house. Members saw the impact at yesterday's site visit. The proposed house will also overlook the gardens. There is an unresolved boundary dispute at this site with CBC as well, um, as they own the gardens. My fourth concern is light. This development will significantly reduce the light to Eden Hall Gardens, and light is key to the planting within the garden and to the immunity able to be enjoyed by residents. This concern is over highways having unresolved safety issues, over visibility displays, and so far as I understand it, they've withheld their approval. My sixth and final concern is we're setting a dangerous precedent if we allow infilling and this increase of density in a low density heritage area, which is specifically protected by policy. So in summary, granting permission erodes Penakai heritage asset, in my view, contrary to CTH2 and DP3. I don't see the point of heritage conservation areas and heritage policy if we continually disregard them or give them little weight. Um, however, if you do grant permission, please consider three planning conditions. One, construction working times need to be adjusted to reflect the safety of the children at Penk High School who walk to and from school along Fort Fernbrook Road. It's a walk to school route without pavements. Second is the granite stone wall is to be significantly reduced. Leftover stone must be redeployed within the site or preferably offered um, to Eden Hall Gardens as part of their conservation work. And finally, yeah. On, the, on the northern border of this new development, there is proposed a hardwood two-metre two, two fence, which is completely unsympathetic to the surroundings and context. So I would suggest if you do grant permission that soft landscaping should be all that's visible um, from Eden Hall Gardens. Thank you, members. Thank you, Anne. I gave you a few more seconds there. OK. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Right, um, over to Dave Watson. Thank you, Chair and members. Um, just to tell you what's in the addendum, the Highway Officer has no further comments in relation to the additional information that was received about the height of the retaining walls and the location of the refuse store and the visibility displays. 
The tree officer has referred to the loss of three trees, um, the removal of those three trees, two cherry and an ash stump. But he says then don't warrant a tree preservation order protection. If planning permission is granted, they should be replaced to maintain tree canopy. And provided there is replacement tree planting, he has no objections to the proposal. Uh, Penman Mauer Town Council, it's concerned that it hasn't been um, given information or time to make con con um, considered representations on the application. And it's made this comment very, very late, only, only received it today. Um, and it says the land registry map is misleading and the documents refer to Aintree Manor. Um, it says there have been a number of amendments since the consultation back in October with amended drawings received in February and in March, and it requests that the application is deferred so that the Town Council is given time to review these amendments. Um, officers responding to, to that particular point, the application was registered in October, um, initial consultations and publicity carried out in October last year, amended plans were received in November last year and further consultations and publicity. Um, we have recently had some further additional information and amended plans submitted in February and in March to address matters by the highway officer. That's included additional an additional plan showing the visibility displays and additional information on the side retaining walls and the bin store area. And we've received further comments from the highway officer, uh, but further publicity and consultation hasn't been carried out on the latest amended and uh, additional information am and amendments because they haven't altered the access or the visibility displays. So we wouldn't normally do consultation on that basis. Um, and that was my addendum. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Dave. <clears throat> right. Anybody want to say something? Councillor Chris Cater. Yeah. Can I just ask um, Paul Jones about the the dissatisfaction of the, the town council with the consultation on the amended plans? I mean, from what? Hang on a minute. Okay. There's confirmation yeah. <laughs> uh, can you ask the question again yeah so if i if i could just uh, ask uh, paula jones um about her take on the on this uh dissatisfaction that's come from pema town council that they haven't been properly consulted about the amended plans i mean from what uh, mr watson has said um they were just details about the visibility display and everything at the highways um and I don't think they would have changed the Pema Mau Town Council's list of object, points of objection, but I think just for clarity, if you, if you could comment on, on that, please. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, just to confirm, I have actually sent um, a response back to the Town Council today to explain that the information provided is really additional information to overcome the highway officer's concerns. And generally, when there aren't significant amendments or changes to a scheme, then we don't tend to reconsult on those types of proposals because it's just additional information. But we do, of course, upload it onto our portal just for transparency purposes. Yeah, thank you for sending them that explanation. Because what what seems quite obvious to the committee members, were, you know, were experienced in in applications having this information last minute. Sometimes, um, you know, that it, 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 I'm glad you've uh, you've sent something to them explaining it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lloyd. Uh, Dave, we'll come back in. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the the speaker, Councillor uh, Councillor Anne. She, re she requested that if permission was granted, that we do consider conditions. And I think she listed three conditions. One was um, the walking route to, to involving, yeah, walking route to the schools and avoiding a conflict with, with that. And also a stone wall. Um, I think it was on the frontage. And then the northern boundary, she said the two, two meter high fence wasn't acceptable and it should be soft landscaping. So officers would, would, Except to all of those conditions, if um if members were approving the application, so there would be a construction method type plan, uh, which would include uh, the the times of construction work to avoid the walking route issue, um and we would condition the details of the stone wall, and we would condition that they're the soft landscaping, um on the boundary on the northern boundary. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Diachmawr, Kinghorid Iwerlod, 
across the evil Lloyd. Um, I'd like to just ask the um, officer, sorry, the highways officer, is there potential betterment for that junction? Paul? No connection. Are you there, Paul? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can. Thank you. Yeah. All right, there's uh, the betterment of the junction is complicated um, by the fact that the plot of lots of an application. So what I can say is that the there is little scope to improve it. Really, traditionally there have been the odd accidents, but it's involved vehicles, brakes failing, coming down the hill and going into the wall. Yeah. So there's no real. Um, issue that we can do to resolve that issue apart from keeping maintenance standards well um, my issues regarding visibility displays were addressed with the additional information that came in um, and i believe that the new retaining walls will be no greater than 600 millimeters above carriageway level and will be finished with natural stone to keep in keep with the area. Okay, sorry, I, I got well. I got most of it. Um, I've got the general gist of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. May I talk about that? Yeah. I'll leave it for now. Thank you. If there's anything that Councillor Eva doesn't feel has yeah. been significant, sufficiently answered, can we just make sure that, that yeah. those issues are sufficiently well, answered? Well, can you can you give your answer again, please? Because we missed a little bit in the beginning. Okay, I'll do my best. Um, no, we do not believe that there are obvious significant improvements to the junction that can be made in this instance. Okay. Would the type of tarmac laid, because you get some that are laid for better traction, don't you? Would that be a improvement? To create the footway? Yes. We looked at that option, um, but it was felt that the provision of a footway would not be proportional to the development. There is also a separate application in the pipeline for the piece of land opposite, and it's more likely a footway would come forward through that application than the one located opposite. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Councillor Joe Nuttall. Can I just ask the officers um, for more details of the boundary dispute, please, and whether that's affecting the, um, the application at all? Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, Matt, the legal officer, would, would want to respond. Uh, yeah, any, any kind of civil, civil issues or uh, disagreements aren't relevant planning considerations, uh, Councillor Joe. Councillor Chris Cater. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, I know um, um, Mr. Watson has addressed this somewhat, but uh, you know, obviously, I welcome the, the cedar trees being re retained. But I am still concerned about the new tree, to, tree and hedge planting. Will that will that be a a condition that that's done? Can you just give me your assurance? Because yes, there are the Eden Hall Gardens below and, and we want them to be screened. Um, so uh, I would like that to be strongly conditioned, the planting. And also I noticed the ecologist uh, has mentioned bat and bird nesting boxes. Can we have those inserted or <laughs> whatever? Um, please, uh, as part of the uh, the planning condition. Um, there's one other question I've got, and that is, um, yesterday on site we were told that none of the actual neighbours had objected. Is that still the case? Dave? Thank you. Um, in terms of the conditions, they're, they're standard conditions, really, so it may not be... A, I think it is explicit in the in the report, but they it, they would be in, included planting conditions for um, for tree planting and for other soft planting. 
and and ecological measures again it's it's uh, every single planning permission really should have eco ec ecological measures included in it so we we would be conditioning that as part of this application thank you okay did i did i get to proposing that we went with the officer's recommendation with no you conditions? didn't propose well, can i can i propose that we grant planning permission with the, with the ensuring that the uh, conservation um, and ec ecological uh, items are in there. And are you happy to put in uh, the conditions proposed by the local member, Councillor McCaffrey? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Council. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Come in, um, Paula. Sorry, just for completeness, I don't think your um, question initially was um, fully responded to regarding. Um, whether any objections have been received from the residents. I've just checked online and I'm just double checking the report, but as far as I can see, there is just one representation that we have seen and that is from the um, local member. Okay, uh, Councillor Joan at all. Yeah, I'm happy to second um, Councillor Chris. Can we ensure that the slate from the wall is either utilised on site or um, given to the communal garden as one of the recommendations, please? I think that's already proposed as part of Councillor Anne's um, yeah. initial um, recommendation. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, Councillor Eva Lloyd. Yeah, it's already been done. I was just making sure that the local members' um, conditions were on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, hello. So there we are. Um, all those in favour? I'm for chair as well. I'm not a video. Who was that? Andrew Wood. Yeah. Can you say that again, Andrew? In, in favour, chair. Um, the video's gone off, yeah. Okay, that's it. That is carried. Diochmoor. Right, in Nessa. Okay, next item. Nearly there. Code reference a zero stroke five one four two seven to safely demolish an existing bookstore at the rear staff car park, Cowan Bay Library, and replace it with a sustainable bespoke bookstore with carbon reduction features, including dedicated collection store and EV charging points for library EV, EV van. Public Library, Seven Woodland Road West. By Colin. Uh, planning officer is Kerry Thomas. Thank you, Chair. Uh, there's no objection from the Highway Authority subject to a condition regarding a construction method statement. Sorry. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, as no re objections were received during the consultation period, the recommendation has been amended to be minded to grant conditional planning permission. Well, Kerry, uh, Councillor uh, Joan at all. Oh, was Eva first? All Eva can tell him. And then Joe. Ladies first. Ladies first, Joe. Deal. Um, yeah, I'd like to propose that we go with officers' recommendations. Um, by reading through the report, there is asbestos there, so it's obviously a safety issue and it has been broken into and it leaks. Um, so I think it, they've mitigated against... Um, the look of it, it's behind the building and it, and it can't be seen. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to propose that we go with officers' recommendations, please. Happy to second. Chair, thank you very much. Anyone else needing to speak? Okay. And that's yeah. carried. Yeah. Sorry. All right, okay. And finally, code reference uh, zero stroke five one four three zero. Again, to safely demolish an existing bookstore at the rear staff car park of Cohen Bay Library, replace it with a sustainable bespoke bookstore with carbon reduction features, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Public Library, Sam Woodland Road West, Cohen Bay. Harry Thomas. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, no, again, no objection. So the recommendation is that we uh, forward the application to the Welsh Ministers for determination, just as a procedural point, as this is an application for conservationary yeah. consent. Do I need a proposal and a second for that? Yes. Yeah, OK. Councillor Christian, uh, Councillor Alan Hunter, sorry. <laughs> Yes, yeah, going to propose we go okay, off. Okay, thank you. Second, please. Uh, Councillor Eva Lloyd. Yeah, due process. Uh, happy to hear you. Yeah. Happy to second. Thank you. All those in favour? And that's carried. Thank, thank you, you very for... much to you all. I commit to you. I'm uh, taking I... part. Officers. Um, Paula, Dave, Perry, who's leaving, James. Liz Wood and Julia, and not forgetting the Honourable Matt, and especially not forgetting Jane Angharad. And I'm not bothering to thank Berwin because he hasn't done a very good job today. Next time, goodbye. Bye. Recording.